Okay, here we are at Metal Talk, here at the Half Moon in Putney. Tonight sees the debut performance from the wonderfully named Cats in Space, who uh, late last year on Harmony Factory Records brought out the album Too Many Gods. Mm. I'm here with lead vocalist Paul Manzi and guitarist and founder Greg Hart. <laughs> Guys, how are you, right? you doing? Good. Very good to good see you too. Yeah, cool. Nice to see you. And I first must ask you, there's a wonderful name, Cats in Space. Where, where did the name come from? Greg. <laughs> Here we go again. I've got a stock answer for this. Which I'll... Um, right, firstly, we, when we first put the band together, we, well, I kicked around loads of weird names and trying to think of something that was really epic and um, anthemic and a little bit pretentious, like all the good progressive sort of classic hard rock bands. And I thought, actually, no, that's not going to make us stand out at all. So we thought, why don't we have a name that people will either love or hate? And I like the idea of having cats in the title because I'm a cat lover and one of my cats had just died. And Stevie Bacon, our drummer, his cat had also just died around the same time. And one day something cropped up and he just said, well, our cats are up, up there in space looking down on us as we're doing the album sort of thing. Cats in space. <laughs> And nice. therefore the band was born. <laughs> and that was it. We said, well, there's one thing here. They'll either love it or they'll hate it, but they won't forget it, hopefully. And that's the thing. So we like Marmite, either love it or hate it, but you won't forget it. And of course, as we know, in the Facebook world, girls love cats. So Girl, Oh, well, that's the other thing. Girls love cats. We joked and we said, put a picture of a cat up on Facebook, gets 150 likes. Put a picture up of your new video, get six, you know. So, uh, <laughs> I know that feeling very well. I know, yeah. My cat, if I put a picture of my cat up, he gets like 150 likes just like that. I put me up there, he gets like seven. <laughs> so, um, you've got a great band to go for, you know, accomplished musicians, you know, you've got Dean Howard and. Yeah, Dean. You guys from your former band Moritz. Moritz, we've got Andy Stewart on keyboards, we've got the Jeff yeah. Brown, of course, of course, and the Sweet on bass, uh, and the Tremolos. And the beautiful Stevie Bacon on drums, who's from Robin Trower Band, and he was in a band called Heaven and Earth that was produced by Queen's David Richards. And um, uh, of course, we've got Mr. Paul Manzi here. We've got Mr. Dean Howard that just walked in the room there, he's behind us. And, um, I need to go away with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, can you believe <laughs> this? Here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dean Mr. Howard. Mr. Dean Howard. Howard. Dean Howard. <laughs> cool, sure. Going to, <laughs> quick. Going to shine his tuppence. <laughs> Can't come out. Do you know what I mean? We just can't be a serious rock band. And why? When you did sort of put this band together, you know, how did you sell it to the other members of the band? Um, I must have thought you a bit crazy. I've got this band, Cats and Spades. How did you sell it to me, Greg? I bribed you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, Paul, wait for the money. Funny yeah. enough, Paul was recommended to me by a, 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 fr a mutual friend um, to do. He came in to do some shows of our Supersonic Seventies show at Christmas. This is with your other band, yeah. With the other band, yeah. yeah. And he came along and did these gigs, and we did two songs in particular, which is We Are the Champions and John Miles' music. And he just knocked it out of the ballpark with such ridiculousness. I just I looked at Andy Stewart, obviously, who was in the band, and I went, Boy, he's the boy. He's the boy for Cats in yeah. Space. And he came down free of charge, which is always good, and um, did the demos, and we all sat round and thought, this could catch fire here. Yeah? And then we got Dino in, who's <laughs> he's in the time, he's in there. And um Free stage nerves. <laughs> it, yeah. And then we got um obviously Stevie Bacon was with us and Jeff Brown joined us. Um because I did a gig with Jeff as well. Um they all just loved it. They ran with the ball quite literally, you know. And um you know, I, th I think what it was was they th they liked the mad concept and because of the age that we all are, we're all roughly the same age. We all go back to that era of, of sort of music from the golden days of the 70s. And they just went, but no one's... Bye, Dino! <laughs> Thanks, <brother. laughs> <You're right. laughs> Only we could do that in an interview. Um, and, but they all embraced the fact that we all understand that kind of music and, and the boys all loved what I was doing and they totally got it. And when they came in to record on the album, bam, it just... Bam. Sometimes, sometimes you can't mm. buy it and you can't pay for it, you can't explain it. Sometimes magic just happens with some people and I like to think that's what's happened to us. Well, like I say, you have captured that sound of the 70s and it's not like the glam rock sound of the 70s, it's like the more the super tramp and the high harmonies and the radio friendly sound more than anything. Yeah, well, again, that's, that, that was the whole idea from day one when me and my sort of co-writer Mick Wilson from 10CC, obviously being in 10CC, mm. And being a brilliant writer, we um, 
I'll, I'll actually feel at this point in the proceedings, ladies and gentlemen, the second person's about to interrupt <laughs> us. This is Mr. Rob Evans. Anybody that knows Rob Evans from Powerplay magazine oh, knows that he's got the tightest wallet in the UK, but he but has actually tonight bought yes. a lager. Otherwise me. known as the Poundland Dave Link. Um, for you, mate. God, I'd like to buy you a This is on film. Yeah, I don't know if you like it. Rob Evans has bought that lager, so if we could get that on film. There's your proof. From January the 6th. <laughs> Thank you very much. The year is 2016. Thank you, mate. Love yeah. you. See this man at a bar, he will get you a drink. Yes. Piss off. <laughs> Four pound eighteen shock. Um, fucking five pound. <laughs> tastes like it. Sorry, Mum. I declare this is Jewish. And now, now we do. Um, yes. Sorry. Yeah. So the the sort of songs that we were, I wanted to write were very much like Sweet, Super Tramp, Queen, ELO, 10 CC. John Miles is a, a huge, huge influence. And again, when I met all the guys and we all got together, I mentioned these sort of particular bands. They went, "Well, no one's doing that." I went, "Exactly. That's what I want to do." totally selfishly and if anybody else liked it great and when we took it out of Mick Wilson's little demo studio up in London and into the big wide world it seems that a lot of people have uh, really embraced it. Ian Capel, our producer, when I told him what we wanted to do and I mentioned a band called The Raspberries on one particular song, um, Unfinished Symphony, he went that is my favourite song of all time, please you know I want to produce the album you know so mm. everyone just embraced it and again it's to do with that not really giving a shit too much and we're just that sort of age now where we want to do that kind of music. Do you think uh, something that's missing in today's current music is the melody, the harmony, mm. the oh, simplicity? Completely, you know I mean? and I think that's what drew us to doing the album with Greg, was the fact that these melodies almost sound like they were written in the 70s, mm. when people were writing songs like that with great melodies, great harmonies. Mm. And, uh, particularly, we wanted a massive absolutely. Harmony. I think we've all loved doing it for that reason. Mm -hmm. And then to think of the concept of actually trying to produce that live is, of course, scary but fun and exciting. It's fun, yeah, and it's, and it's again, it's the, the approach of when you've got someone like Paul who's got this incredible range, and it's not all about singing up on in the rooftops and singing falsetto stuff, which we can all do, obviously, but it's that bottom end of the register that Paul's got in particular. That, which, dare I say, it's got the pop end, the soul end, and the rock end all in one little bundle. So it means that we can do harmonies and melodies and go right through the card, rather than going, well, rock stuff has to be in that key, and you have to go blah, 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 blah all the time. We can do all those kind of really nice harmonies, like Pilot used to do in the mm. 70s, yeah. another great band. And that really excited me, the fact that I had these people that, you'd literally say, I want to do a song like that, I want it to go like that, but I want to put the kitchen sink in it and make it go even more massive. And we knew we could do it, so we were. It was really good, and not many bands either can do it anymore, or maybe they don't want to do it. I don't know, but we're just trying to take our age group back to mm. the golden age of pop, you know. And finally, you just mentioned age group, and that's one thing I absolutely love about this album is your pure honesty. Like um, songs like Unfinished Symphony. Yeah. Where you, you sing about being in a band, and it doesn't really matter anymore. I'm, all that matters to me in life is music. You know, Absolutely. tell us more about that song. Oh, well, Greg. Well, blimey, yeah. <laughs> what were you well, thinking? Well, funny enough, when, when, funny enough, when Paul came in to do the first couple of songs, and this particular song had this huge lead vocal in the bridge section where you've got to rock out like Roger Daltrey, and I was always, I wasn't sure that I was going to use the song at one point because I thought, well, who's going to sing that? And he came in and knocked it out of the middle of next week ridiculously easily. And the song just took on its own sort of life, if you like. Um, but the, the lyric, funny enough, it was the quickest song I wrote on the album, funny enough. It literally came to me just like that. It was because it was so honest, I was being so honest with it. I thought, I'm just going to write this lyric that is not contrived, it's just going to be me and what I think about how we nearly made it and didn't quite make it and then we didn't get on the TV and we couldn't get in Kerrang but we got on this little ladder round mm. down the side one week and it said, oh, we're playing the Moritz. This is your band, Moritz. Moritz yeah. from back in the 80s. You know, and it was, it's a tongue-in-cheek thing about we were just in it to, to, to be famous and for the music but there's a tagline in the song that says, I'm just in it for the money. Because we were, we were just all in it to mm. try and make money as well. So, And of course, now we're not. <laughs> 
No, not Are at we? all. No, no, we're not in no. it for the money at all. It's not right. We don't want anyone to buy the record. Rich no. and successful, so we don't need the money. Yeah, do no, we? we do it for fun now. Fun of course. Talking yeah. of finance, though, it, it's got a massive sound on the album. Yeah, and the, you know, was it an expensive album to produce and record? Yes, look, this 12 inch vinyl <laughs> album here, ladies and gentlemen, which is a lovely gatefold version of our CD, it was, it was expensive and it was. That's going to fall over. It was. Um, Scary, you know, when we first started it off, it was only a couple of little songs. We did Mr. Heartache with myself, Mick mm -hmm. Wilson. We took it to Andy Scott's house in Somerset and he sang on it, and it was going to be a Mick Wilson song. And then a few things happened, and Mick's album sort of got delayed because of 10 CC. And about four or five songs in, I was going, God, why don't I write this song? And he said, We know it's Mr. Heartache. I said, Well, yeah, but that's for you. We agreed that's going to be for you. He went, Nah, no, nah. he said, why don't you guys have it? And I thought, cool. Yeah. Thank um, God. Thank God we did, you know. And at the end of the day, we were songwriters writing songs together, yeah. so we, you can't be precious about songs, you write songs. But when it came back into the Cats in Space pot, it just went, that's going to be mm -hmm. the, the thing for your album. That's the single. That's yeah. the single. Yeah. You shot a great video for that, actually, as well. We did, and oh. Paul's done his acting yeah. in his time. Yeah. You know, he was oh, yeah. run with the ball with that, didn't Oh, he? I enjoyed that. I love yeah. it. I, I could do loads of that. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. And he, we said, well, Paul's got to be Mr. Heartache and he can play the character and stuff. And um, it turned out really good. I mean, not many people could have sort of pulled that off. We all left him two of the green screen. <laughs> yeah. They just walked off and I was there on my own. Yeah. yeah. But it, and, it, and it worked out really, really well. Yeah. And going back to like, the production of the album, we got Mike Moran. He's done like, um, some of the strings on the album. And uh, yeah. he's a name that I remember from the 70s, you know, um, with Lindsay DePaul, actually, Eurovision Song Contest. Well done for remembering that, because yes. some people think he did... Unfortunately, they didn't win it, they finished Someone said he did Save Your Kisses For Me, <laughs> Yeah, I've known Mike for a very long time, and I'm very lucky to say that. Um, and he's done writing with me in the past. And um, I just phoned him up and said, got this song, it needs orchestrating. It, I want to go the whole hog, I don't want to, you know, go the half cock on it. And he agreed to do it, and he just came in and scored an entire 80 piece orchestra mm -hmm. for the song. And um, went up to the studio, and he just blew me away with what he did. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's, he's a legend, you know. I mean, Mike, you know, you can talk all day about the people he's played with. Yeah. But yeah, I, I pulled a favour in on that one, and he just loved to do it. He's that cool. He's a big cool dude, you know. And tell us more about another song, um, Last Man Standing. Last Man Standing. So you mentioned like Tim Pan Alley in the well, video, exactly. images of the Astoria, you know. So it's Have like... you been down Denmark Street recently? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Well, that's the thing. We was all down Denmark Street and watching it be pulled down and Facebook was awash with all these things that were happening. And I had this idea of a song. There was no lyrics involved. It was just a, an instrumental piece. And again, once Paul came in, um, I thought, oh, this could be a bit like Slade. And uh, we didn't know what the song was going to be like and then one day me and Mick were talking about it and we talked about Tim Pan Alley and that kind of thing and the song sort of grew from there and it's, it's how, the, how the, not just London but cities in general, mm. the, the scapes are changing to put up high rise posh apartments for Russians or whatever and um, we wanted to write a song about again getting us all back to our golden age of being 16, 17 in the 70s when we'd go to our music shops and we'd go up to London or Manchester or Leeds and your day out on a Saturday would be to spend your money on you know being a guitar player or a drummer or a bass player That's right. um, and a lot of people have tapped into that because it is such a magical time when you're 15 mm. aspiring to be a you know rock and roll star mm. And there's nowhere to go anymore. You have to go online and do it off of. Yeah, because everything's online now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They walk around the shops like you used to. There's no magic, yeah. you know. Yeah. So again, it's a little nod back to those magical days. I think when the magical days like these days, I don't think kids of the future remember their first ever download. But obviously, the likes of us remember our first ever record, exactly how much we paid for it and where we bought it from. And yeah. Well, quite enough. What I'm saying that. What was your first record you bought? <laughs> Yours is a do list, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not allowed to say Gary Glitter, am I? We got Jeff yeah. Brown, they we got well, Jeff Brown's background, and he had the world's first wax cylinder, if I remember rightly. Was it? Was that? Mm, I did. Yeah. There you go, he's there. Like, yeah. um, my first record was Goodbye to Jane by Slade. Oh, wow, good choice. Um, and it jumped. And I was so distraught that I got it for Christmas. Well, you thought it jumped, he was going to go back to Jane. Let me go back to Jane. It, oh, it's a pain in the ass. So I, well, my brother said I'd take it back and change it for yeah. him. Took it back and they'd sold out. So he came back with Crocodile Rock. 
which is all well and good, but it's yeah. not Slade. It's, I love it, John, don't get it wrong, but I hate Crocodile Rock. But, um, so yeah, that was my first record. My first album was um, Aladdin Sane. Oh, that's I got good. that when I was 10. Wow. Of course it says wanking. <laughs> All very rude when you're 10 years old. Exactly. Yeah. We'll better turn it down when that bit comes on. <laughs> what was your first record, Paul? Well, I, I think, um, from what I can remember, I actually bought with my own money, I think it was a song I the same. Oh, Led Zeppelin. Oh, Led that's just too cool. <laughs> but the thing is, back then, I just wanted to be a guitarist. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. Yeah, and, uh, do. I wanted to play like Jimmy Page because of the way that he pushed all these solos yeah. and went for things that other people weren't going for. And that was exciting for me, being that creative, right. and that's what got me into music in the first place. You know? Excellent. And um, go back to the album, Too Many Gods, and uh, how impressed have you been by the reviews? Because I've only seen good or excellent reviews. You know, oh, no. We're, we're, we're waiting. Wait, we're waiting, we're waiting. Yeah, there's got to be a bad <laughs> review out there somewhere, which is fair enough. Yeah, can take good with the bad. <laughs> But are there any? There's not any, are there? No. Uh, Jeff Barton was rather honest about it, I guess. Whether, I don't know, but that's fair enough. It's still a good review. Mm. Still 7 out of 10. But no, we, we, we can't take it in, mate. We just, it's bloody ridiculous. It's, well, it's been overwhelming because you, you re we're reading literally our. our uh, we've got two um, AR people that sort of go out and do all this stuff for us, and they just email every day another review and I'm mm. sure it's one that I've seen before so like, oh, I've seen that one mate he said no this is just coming from Spain or wherever and they're just extraordinary mm. and we and the, and the good thing about it is what we are pleased about you know a good review is a good review proofs in the pudding whether or not mm. you know people come and see you play live and if they buy your album but what we're most pleased about is the fact that a year ago me and Mick Wilson said wouldn't it be great if there's a lot of people out there that thought like us and wanted music from then and thought like that and they thought about Tim Pan Alley and they did this and all that and now with the reviews they've all got it they're all totally on board mm. with it Excellent and um, the great thing is I've seen your sound check earlier it's, tonight is your first gig and the most important thing is can you recreate the sound of the album live and watching your sound check <laughs> the answer is yes most really? definitely. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So very, how hard is that to recreate kind. live you're very kind no, is that with, without I, I will not put us in the same bracket as Queen please don't put us in that bracket but their approach was on album you do the best sonic soundscape you can make on a record because that lasts forever mm. a gig is a gig that lasts a night and you've got to approach it in a different way and if our album's one thing and we'll do the kitchen sink and we'll do that live we just try and put on a rock and roll show mm. and do the songs yeah. as best we can it will be very action. close but remember we're, we've got to perform it live yeah. Yeah. and it'll always be different to record and we're rock and rollers you know? Yeah. We, you know we love all the lush pop stuff but we do like to rock out and we've got a pretty good we've got a pretty good um across the board version live that people hopefully will be excited by the power of it and if they want to all the, the, the tiny little incidentals which people were picked up on particularly on the mixes and the the way that the production lot is then listen to the album but buy the album buy yeah, the album buy the, buy the album. album most definitely but come and see it's live because we'll give you another side to it as well and that's what queen did in the 70s yeah. and again that sticks in my mind from a kid going to watch them live yeah. going bloody hell bomb blast and you're listening to Time Up or Down, just going, this is just the best thing ever. Well, so it is early January, so what's the plans for the rest of the year? Um, well, we've got some gigs lined up. We're trying to get a few festivals lined up, and hopefully we're tentatively putting some steps to doing a few, um, maybe some joint shows of a few other bands later on in the year, try and promote the album. And um, I'm sort of planning the tentative steps of album two as well. Excellent, fantastic. Um, which is... Um, well, Greg, if you're going to have me, <laughs> <laughs> if you play our record, it will happen. <laughs> the album, as you can see up there, is called Too Many Gods. It's out now on Harmony Factory, and believe me, it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, it's a blast from the past, but it's got a modern pop edge to it as well. Pop rock edge, whatever, power pop, whatever you want to call it. But it's great. Singable, hummable, memorable songs. Like what, what, what more do you want? <laughs> what more do we want? Just buy the record, folks. Greg Paul, Cats in Space, been Thanks fantastic talking to you. All the best for the future. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you.